Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Hollywood Actors Guide to Surviving the Film and Television Industry. Today, let's talk about how to get the most out of your booking. The first thing I would say is make friends with the director of photography because if you do anything to piss them off, they are the first people that can make it really easy for you to end up on the cutting room floor. Anything you can do to make their job easier is going to help you get more screen time. So learn to like the like and love the director of photography. Find out who it is when you go to set and love the camera that they are working with, right? So with that being said, I also think that you need to get fast on the technical stuff. It saves production money and it helps get you hired back. This goes beyond things that you learn, for instance, in an audition class, like how to hit your mark. It, it, it becomes, it bleeds into when you are on set, actually understanding what people around you are saying and not seeming like a, a complete amateur, right? So let's quickly go over some terms and things you may hear. Let's talk about equipment. Well, why would you need to know about equipment? Well, you know, you might be walking and someone goes, hey, watch out for that stinger. Stinger? What's a stinger? It's an extension cord. Or has anyone got a hot brick? That's a walkie-talkie with fully charged battery. Legs or sticks, that's, that's slang for the tripod. Or a clapper. So, you know that thing that they clap in front of the camera that does have a name? It's a clapboard. A lot of times they just call it the clapper. You've got the boom mic. That's the big pole with the mic that they usually hang above you. Uh, you've got a dead cat. That's a black cover that goes over the end of a boom mic. You have a steady cam. I have a friend who's a steady cam operator. They wear these heavy equipment and it's, it's make the camera like glide smoothly so that they're literally wearing like this harness and they're carrying the camera. Uh, squibs are those little explosive devices that go on actors. Um, you've probably seen millions of these throughout your life watching movies. So you also have a dolly and that is like the thing that they wheel the camera on when you see like that smooth glide across and you'll see somebody sitting next to the camera. It looks like a, almost like an amusement park ride, but that is the dolly. And of course there are people. You need to know who all the people are. I know you know what a director is, but what about the first AD? So the first AD is the first assistant director, and they're in charge. They're basically the second in charge on, on any set behind the director. They're like the link between the producers and the directors and the cast and the crew, and they're responsible for safety, and they're responsible for things getting done on time. And did I mention things getting done on time? And they're under a lot of pressure. So your second AD, they work directly with the first AD. So the second assistant director, they're responsible for drawing up all of like the logistical documents, like the call sheets and things like that. And they make sure that if production has one, that the third AD has the cast and crew in check. Some productions don't have 30 ADs, your bigger productions do. The third production is, or I'm sorry, the third assistant director, the third AD, is basically like a people wrangler. They make sure that all members of the cast and crew are in the right place and are right there. On smaller budget films, this could just be like a um, base camp PA. Uh, so you also have gaffers. They're the head electricians. They're responsible for setting up all of the lighting equipment. Um, you almost, um, you, sometimes you hear them being called a spark or a juicer, which I think is cute. You have a key grip. The key grips are the head technician or the grips also. They're, they're responsible for setting up all of the non-electrical lighting equipment, like the flags and cookies and modifiers. A friend of mine really explained this really well to me when I first starting out. They're like, the gaffers bring the lights in and the grips kind of take the light away. <laughs> uh, your best boy, they are an assistant to either the gaffer or the key grip. And you'll hear them by like best boy electric or best girl grip kind of thing. 
And it comes from like old timey studios and they're like, bring me your best boy to come help with this. And that became a job title. You'll also hear people mention a second unit. You may even be shooting on the second unit yourself as an actor. It's a completely separate crew. They, they film a lot of things that don't necessarily involve face-to-face -face interaction, though sometimes it can, but they'll do inserts. Um, sometimes they'll do the action sequences and they usually work alongside the main unit at the same time. So the director will be on the main unit, but they may not be there with you on the second unit. So let's go over some vocabulary. Now you're an actor, you should know what blocking is. It's the process of working out where to position the camera and the lights based on where the actors are going to be standing and moving throughout the scene. It might seem like common sense, but this is, it, it, it's interesting. A lot of, uh, I've noticed beginning act, beginner actors think that they set the cameras and then the actors come in and figure out where they're gonna be. But that's usually why you have a rehearsal. It's called a blocking rehearsal. You go in as an actor and you show them what you have in mind. And then they take that and they work around where they want the cameras and things. It doesn't mean the director's like, no, 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 I don't. I, I think actually you would be here because of this. It's, you know, you're, you don't have all the power, but you do have a lot of it. So know that when you're going in with a blocking rehearsal, they want you to bring something. They don't want you to just wait for them to tell you what to do. You'll hear um, strike, you know, we're striking the lights. If you come from theater, you definitely know what this is. It just means that they're, they're gonna like, They'll, they'll yell it before they turn off some lights and it's also they'll do it when they're going to turn on some lights and it's, I mean, shit is about to get really bright <laughs> if they're like striking and then all of a sudden it's like you're like, it's always right in your eye. I don't know how they do it, but they do it right in your eye. You'll hear people say 10-1. This is what you say if you need to use the restroom. So it's just the polite way of saying where you're, you're gone. So when people are on the rest, on the walkies going, hey, Jennifer's gone to the restroom or the bathroom. And it's just like, no, she's gone 10-1. And that just, I think it just sounds more, you know, polite. It's kind of nice that they have that. Check the gate. If the director shouts this out, it's a happy moment. It means they want to check out the most recent take to make sure that everything is good, like there's no weird hair or bugs on the lenses or things like that because they like the take and they just want to make sure it was clean. You'll hear them say uh, flag on the play. That means that there is something wrong with the most recent take and you need to go back to correct it. Um, a hot set is a set that is perfectly set up with all the props and cameras and lighting and everything is where everybody wants it. And so think of it like it's a crime scene and don't touch a thing unless it's literally your job as an actor to move a thing. Don't touch the things. If someone says hold the red, that means don't move. They're about to move into another take or start you from a certain spot. So hold the red, just, just freeze and wait for further instructions. Uh, let's see, honey wagon, that is a word they use for porta potties sometimes or the really, 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 really small trailers that they put you in when you only have a few lines. They're tiny, they're smelly, they're loud, they're not the greatest. Um, and there's a really disgusting reason they're called honey wagons and it has to do with how we used to treat women back in the day and how girls used to get, uh, roles on sets, but I am not here to, to go down that. And I don't know if they're little kids listening, so we'll move on crafty. Oh goodness. If you don't know what crafty is, you're in for a treat. It's literally where you can go and get snacks. Literally crafty craft services, video village. You should know what this is, but if you don't, it's where all of the monitors are and where the directors and such usually gather in a scripty or I'm sorry. Um, apparently we don't use script anymore. I do apologize. The script supervisor is there and they are watching everything and taking notes. Some other technical things to be aware of is just some paperwork stuff. You know, call sheet. I'm sure you know what that is. It's just the documentation that spells out like the who, what, where, when, how, why of everything. You know, what scenes are being filmed, where they're being filmed, when they're being filmed, what time you need to be on set. You'll hear uh, change pages. Those are colored pieces of paper that detail any changes they may have 
may have been. They are a different color so that someone can quickly see which page has been changed and they can just kind of flip to that, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have the continuity script that is used by the script supervisor to record all the itty bitty teeny tiny little details of every time a scene is shot from the from the the length of the actor's hair sometimes you know to the weather to how set has changed you know all that other fun stuff so let's talk about the shots knowing what the shots are are so important for you if they say we are going into an extreme wide shot this is usually also known as like an establishing shot. It's really large. It shows like if you're in the forest, it'll show you like the huge forest and it gives your audience an idea of where you are, where you are in the world. Now you have your master shot. This is also known as a wide shot. They capture all of the relevant actors and the action taking place within a scene. Um, they're they're kind of like extreme wide shots. Obviously, they're not extreme, so they're not smaller. Um, but they're used to provide context before jumping into a closer range shot. You have the cowboy shot. So if they say they're going to do a cowboy, that is going to be a shot on you from the thighs up. These shots were used a lot during the Western film era when it was essential for audiences to be able to see the actors holding guns and to see their gun holsters. And so they, they come to known as the cowboy. So that makes it easier to remember. You have the mid shot. The mid shot is usually what they ask you to do for your auditions. And it's the most popular. They're, they're like, they're from the waist up, you know? So you see like, I mean, even interviewers on the news, they use waist up a, a lot of like most of the things you see in TV and film, go watch something after this and watch. It's a lot of mid shots, a lot. An insert shot is a close up of an object that's filmed separately and it's inserted into the scene during editing. And what I think is amusing is if you're a big time actor and they want a shot of you, of your hand putting a letter on a desk, often that big time actor is not the hand putting that letter on a desk. They have um, another actor do that for them so that they don't have to be there for that because they have got bigger, bigger things to do. You have an OTS, which is an over the shoulder shot. Um, this is when the camera's positioned like right over your shoulder. You see this, you do see this a lot, unless you're watching like a Coen Brothers. They don't really like to do this. Some directors do and some directors don't. It's really good to pay attention to which ones do and don't when you're finding out which directors you're working with. And of course, you know what the close up is. That's like the money shots. That's the, that's the moment they know you're going to win the Oscar. So, you know, they move in really close so you, they can catch your, all your emotions. And then you have. The martini shot, and this will be the martini shot of our podcast. It's the last shot of the day. So hurrah, huzzah, excellent. That means your long day is almost over. They're just like, we just, let's just do one more for the road. And back in the day when they called martini shot, they used to have people on set with a, a, a cart full of alcohol and they would make people martinis and stuff at the end of the day. I'm not even kidding it. You can look it up. You can look it up. Ah, so thank you so much for listening. As always, we are still sponsored by weaudition.com. If you need somebody to read with, rehearse with, audition with, help a self-tape or get paid to do self-tapes, go to weaudition.com, promo code HAG25. That's it. That's all I have for you guys. Break a leg out there and remember, you are not alone.